What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today is part two of our Solix and Apex 5.06 update tutorial. Today we're going to get into the circle to draw feature on these waypoints and how to draw to select these waypoints and change them and edit them as groups instead of one at a time. We're also going to get into side imaging, down imaging, and 2D, how to get the clearest picture and tweak some of those settings to get a better picture when you're out there in the water. So stick with us guys. We're going to dive into it right now. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do is talk about this new draw to select feature. We're going to get to a full screen chart. We can just click on that views tab, click on chart, click on that full screen chart, and that's going to bring us there. To select these waypoints right here and change them as a group, we want to click on this little map icon right here next to the three bar, click on draw to select, and now we're going to change this group of waypoints right here by just drawing a circle around those waypoints. Once they're selected, we can either change those color palettes right here to any color icons we want, or we can customize the icon completely by clicking on that icon button right there, and we have a whole list of icons that we could use. We got ice fishing icons, symbols, navigation icons. We can go by species. If we you know, know a couple of these waypoints have a sp specific species on there, we can do that. Or we can go on this fishing one right here, and it has stumps, uh, sticks, logs, boulders. We're going to mark all this, say, as weeds. Say it's a weed edge right there. We could hit the save button. And now all these, hit the exit button when you're done. And now all these waypoints have weeds, except for the one we didn't select. We can do the same thing with that one up there. Draw to select. Circle around that one. Click on that icon. And we can do it as a home icon. Save. And now that's a home icon up there. Exit out of there. And that's a really cool feature, guys. You can, you can change a lot of waypoints at once instead of doing them individually. And you have all those options of weeds, boulders, stuff like that. Next thing I want to talk about, guys, is this little button right here that's next to the map icon. This is going to be all your depth highlights. You can turn depth highlights on or off. You can do a shallow water highlight. So say we wanted five feet highlighted red. We can change that color between red and yellow. You can do that there. And also, you have a depth highlight. So say you're targeting a certain range, say 12 feet, you could bring this down to 12 feet. Highlight range is going to be three feet. So it's going to go, you know, 11, 12, 13 feet or, or, you know, foot and a half on each side of that 12 foot mark. And it'll highlight that green. You can change that color right there. So that's something really cool too. It's right there in that menu. It's not in the actual menu right here. Now, Auto Chart Live, an awesome feature that's been on Helix and Solix and all these uh, for a while. To get there, you hit that little three bar menu right there, Auto Chart Live. Click on that, and now you have your Auto Chart Live. You can turn it on or off right here, and you have all your options right here um, for auto, auto Chart. You could offset your level uh, of your water level in case you're in deeper or shallower water if you're in a reservoir. And you can turn up and down these minimum range um, colors so you can maximize your screen. If you're fishing a lot in 1 to 20 foot, you'd want to change this from 0 to 20 foot, not 50. You'll have more colors inside there than you would going 0 to 50. All right, guys. One more thing before we dive into side imaging. We can edit these waypoints individually. If you go to your main menu, click on My Data. Here's a list of your waypoints. You could actually click on, say, 0043, and you could edit this icon individually, or you could rename it to whatever you want, um, things like that. So that's just something that's easy to do now as well. And then once you're done, you could just exit out of there, and it'll be a new waypoint under a certain name. All right, guys, the next thing I want to talk about is side imaging and how to get a little clearer picture out there in the water. We're going to go down to side imaging, full screen, you can see this is a really great picture. This is a simulation mode, of course, but there's a few things we could do to adjust this to get a little better view and a little more detail inside this picture. One of the first things is your dynamic contrast. We're going to go ahead and click on that three bar up there to get to the menu. We have a dynamic contrast button right here. If you click that, it's going to darken up the screen, but it's going to be a lot more sharp. Turn that off and it's kind of washed out from the bright color. 
if you turn it on, it gets a little more detail to this structure. Then we can go ahead and adjust our contrast down some to bring it a little more brighter and our sensitivity up a hair. And it's just going to show a little more detail. You can see a lot of these rocks and stuff inside this little structure right here has a lot more detail. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, bring our sensitivity back down to 9, our contrast up to 10. Hopefully that's fast enough that you can see. But you can just see a little more detail in all that stuff when I had that dynamic contrast on. The next thing I want to talk about is water column sensitivity is a new feature on these units. Is You could turn this on or off. If your water column has a lot of clutter in there, you could turn this down some like this. And it's going to take a lot of this disturbance out of the water column. You can see how it's a lot more black up here. doesn't have a lot of this stuff in it. You could also bump that up if you're not marking enough and you're really looking for stuff in the water. Now you can see it's picking up a lot more stuff inside this water column right here. We're going to go ahead and turn that back to off. The last thing I want to talk about is sharpness. And your sharpness is right here. You can click that sharpness on. And you can go to sharpness on. I like it on low. And that's going to give you a little more sharpness. Of, of course, you'll have to go back to your menu again and adjust these sensitivities up or down to get that best picture. But you could bump that sensitivity up to 11, contrast down to 8 or 9, and you can see just a lot more detail in all these structures. All right, guys, this is going to work the same way in DI, down imaging. We're going to go ahead and click on down imaging full screen and you can see that there's a lot of clutter here in the water column we can get rid of that with that water column sensitivity by clicking that main menu button go down to settings water column sensitivity we're going to bump down to negative three and you can see that that screen past where i've set it is all nice and dark and it's not getting all that clutter inside that screen you're going to be able to see fish and stuff a lot better structure we can go ahead and that back button one time. Our dynamic contrast, we can turn that on. And of course, it's going to give us a little more detail in all this structure. I'm going to turn that off for now. Go back down here to settings. And we're going to have our sharpness. Same thing, we can turn that on, on, on low. And now we can see a lot of detail inside this structure. And then again, we can go back to our sensitivity. Turn that down a hair, turn that contrast up a couple notches, and that's going to darken that screen up a little bit so it's not so bright and washed out. But you can see from here to here is a much better screen just by adjusting a couple of those features. Now the last thing I want to talk about is 2D. We're going to go ahead and go back to our 2D sonar, full screen, 2D, and this is similar. We also have a clear mode on here that has a clear mode or max mode. And that will eliminate some of that clutter when it's on clear mode. You can see it has a lot of stuff here in a water column. Turn it on clear mode. And that's going to start clearing it up quite a bit from what it was right back here. We can adjust our cone right here to wide, narrow, or full. Of course, if you're looking for fish out wide away from the boat and you're just trying to look around and find fish or bait, I would put it on wide. If you're looking for individual fish, trying to sharpshoot, anything like that, you want to be on narrow, and that's going to narrow that cone down, but there'll be a lot more detail in that fish, and you'll be able to find them a lot faster. Go ahead and exit out of there. We're going to go into these settings right here. Go over here to our settings. And we have surface clutter. So a lot of times in the summer, we have uh, algae bloom, stuff like that, where you get a lot of surface clutter. We could adjust that now and get rid of some of that surface clutter. As you can see, all the clutter came off the surface, and now all we're marking is fish and things like that. All right, guys, and that's it for this little tutorial. Thanks for watching. 
Comment down below if there's anything else you'd like to see. Leave a comment, let me know, and I can make a video on something if enough of you guys like to see it. Uh, please subscribe. We got a bunch of new stuff coming up. The Explore series, Mega 2. We're all going to be having that in the next few weeks, guys. So subscribe down below, and we'll catch you on the next one.